so what you crap and welcome to Thailand news today it's the last day of the week and well this is a holiday edition because uh, well it's a public holiday not for everybody in fact not for us at the tiger but we'd like to well enjoy some of the holiday atmosphere cats helping that's dab there in the background and contemplating when we're going to be cutting the grass next oh I've also been joined by Dusty it's a catathon as we look at Thailand news today we better get started. The Ministry of Transport says that just under 5.3 million Bangkokians have left the city. It's not too bad when you consider that the official population of Bangkok is only 10.7 million. The exodus began on Wednesday, a day before the holiday period began. Some 2.25 million have left by bus and van, and another 2.74 million personal cars have headed out of the capital, around 40% higher than expected. The four-day long weekend was announced two months ago as a substitute holiday for Songkran and attempts to get Thais and expats able to get the time off to travel and stimulate the domestic travel economy. The state transport service, the transport company, says that it laid on 4,500 buses and van services accommodating over 63,000 travellers. Yesterday the number rose to 6,000 bus services and 200,000 passengers. BioNTech and Pfizer have jointly announced that their candidate COVID-19 vaccine could be ready for distribution by the end of next month. BioNTech co-founder Ergur Sahin says that both companies plan to apply for emergency use authorization of their candidate vaccines in the US today, while the European regulators are still in the latter part of their phase three trials. The two companies announced the completion of their trials involving 43,000 volunteers, more than 21,000 who received the vaccine without any serious side effects or consequences. One of the key challenges with the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine candidate is the distribution. It will need to be stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius. Responding to vaccine sceptics and the vocal anti-vaxxer movement, Mr Sahin says the only option was to keep providing answers, information and transparency. He hoped that once people were inoculated, numbers would only grow when those people shared their positive experiences. The vaccine, if successfully released, will require an initial dose and a later booster injection. Thai PM Prayuchanachar has warned pro-democracy demonstrators that they could face the full force of the law if they continued to escalate the protests. On Tuesday, thousands of anti-government protesters gathered outside the Parliament building where MPs and Senators were voting on draft amendments to the Constitution. The PM insists the government has attempted to resolve the situation through peaceful means, accusing protesters of not cooperating. He says the authorities have dealt with protests lawfully, but the situation is now worsening and tending towards violence. He adds that the ongoing unrest risks undermining the national interest and the monarchy, as well as a risk to the safety of people and property. In response to Tuesday's protests outside the Thai Parliament and the police response, Human Rights Watch Brad Adams sent a letter to the Tiger. We published it in full. We've just got some excerpts here. It starts, Thai police unnecessarily used water cannons and tear gas against peaceful democracy demonstrators outside the parliament in Bangkok on November 17, 2020, in violation of international human rights standards. Human Rights Watch observed crowd control units using water cannons laced with purple dye and an apparent tear gas chemical, as well as tear gas grenades and pepper spray grenades to disperse thousands of demonstrators, including many students. It went on to say the Thai authorities should heed the advice of the UN Secretary General and stop using excessive or unnecessary force against demonstrators. The Thai authorities should promptly and impartially investigate the violence, including the alleged use of firearms by pro-government demonstrators, and prosecute all those responsible for abuses, regardless of their political affiliation or rank. 
millions of methamphetamine pills, 800 kilograms of crystal methamphetamine and 700 kilograms of cannabis have been seized in four separate cases. The Narcotics Suppression Bureau confirmed the seizures along with the arrests of nine suspects at its headquarters in Bangkok. The parade for the media of police and the seized narcotics are a staple in Thai police PR. Pattaya residents are expressing concern over the recent spate of air pollution, with the city currently engulfed in a whole lot of smog. The deterioration in air quality has been ongoing for a number of days, with a cloud of haze obscuring the bay and neighbouring islands. It comes as mass sugarcane burning is again taking place in farming communities around the country, an activity that's caused air pollution problems in the past. While sugarcane burning is technically illegal, residents say the law is not strongly enforced, resulting in an annual rise in air pollution levels. Well, haze, smog, air pollution, call it what you like, it's all equally inconvenient. Uh, here we've got uh, Darm, further up the back there we've got uh, Dab, sort of blends in with the concrete. Down here we've got Dusty, all three cats joining in as we say goodbye from Thailand News Today, wishing you a good weekend. Hopefully it might be part of your long weekend, otherwise enjoy the two days off and we'll see you again on Monday.